There was a very striking change of opinion after the 1967 war. Uh, before the war, uh, Zionism wasn't much of an issue. Even the Holocaust wasn't. Uh, the New York Times, for example, was pretty much a non-Zionist newspaper. The Commentary Magazine, which is now uh, you know, an extreme supporter of Israel, uh, was non-Zionist. In fact, so uh, a neutral on Israel that the Zionist movement uh, established a competing journal to uh, uh, to try to uh, mobilize the Jewish community. Uh, and Norman Podhoretz, who's now the editor of Commentary, was the editor of Commentary, and very passionately pro-Israel. You read his writings up to the 67 war, and barely, barely mentioned it. It wasn't a concern or an interest. And as I mentioned, the, uh, you know, the whole, the um, Holocaust museums, uh, Holocaust courses, studies programs, almost entirely a post-1967 issue. It's not because the Holocaust became more important after 1967. I mean, if anything, it was more important in the late 1940s when you could actually do something to uh, save the, the survivors. And uh, all of this was clearly timed to uh, uh, justify the occupation, and it also was related to a shift in U.S. government policy. Before 1967, uh, Israel was you know, kind of an ally, but not a particularly important one. After 1967, uh, uh, the current uh, uh, unique relationship between Israel and the United States was established. And educated opinion tends on almost every issue to conform pretty well to government policy. Uh, the press, uh, the scholarship, um, ac academics, uh, public intellectuals and so on, uh, not just on this issue. So as Israel became a, 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 a leading uh, strategic asset, as it was called, uh, what the Nixon administration called a cop on the beat to protect uh, the energy systems that the U.S. relies on, uh, opinion changed radically. In fact, there's another aspect to the uh, uh, sort of official um, narrative, if you like, and that is that the United States is an honest broker trying to mediate between two difficult partners. So look at the coverage of this, what are called the peace, current peace, the current peace process. The U.S., the picture is the U.S. is in the middle trying very hard to conciliate the two uh, con opposing partners who are being very difficult and dragging their feet and we offer them inducements and so on. But it's a total myth. Uh, if, there was a, if there were real negotiations on one side, there would be some neutral moderator, I don't know who, maybe from Finland or someplace, uh, and on one side would be the United States and Israel, on the other side would be the world. Uh, literally. I mean, for decades, there has been an overwhelming international consensus on a political settlement of the conflict, namely a settlement on the internationally recognized border uh, with perhaps uh, minor and mutual modifications, some kind of trade-off. Uh, that's official U.S. wording from the time when the U.S. was still part of the world back in the late 60s. Uh, since uh, uh, since then, the U.S. has just been blocking it. Uh, that's, it began in January 1976, when the U.S. for the first time vetoed a Security Council resolution calling for a two-state settlement. And I won't run through the history, but it comes right up to the present. Uh, by now, the international consensus is literally overwhelming. It includes you know, the non-aligned countries, Europe, uh, it includes the Arab states, the Arab League, it includes the Organization of Islamic States, which includes Iran. In fact, it includes every relevant partner except the U.S. and Israel.